watching Lynn TV and Lucy Robson with today's main stories from Paphos. Telecommunications provider Primetel is building an installation in the Anadoliku area of Paphos for the operation of a landing station needed for the upgrade of Cyprus's internet network. The announcement follows months of dispute between Yeroskibu municipality and the company over the construction of a landing station on the coast near the village, opposed by landowners on health grounds. There were mixed reactions from Paphos political parties to a meeting held with President Christophius last Friday on the ailing local economy. Christophius met with the committee of SECO, the coordinating committee for political parties and professional bodies at Paphos Town Hall, to hear out worries about and suggestions for the plight of the construction and tourism sectors. The ECO and DC parties said that the discussion lacked details about impending infrastructure projects. But Akel said it was optimistic the government would take steps to face the local financial crisis. On Monday, a meeting of Paphos Municipality voted against bishopric proposals to build a cathedral in the Central Park. The church submitted plans for the cathedral last July, asking for special consideration over certain planning permission matters. The outcome of the meeting means that the plans will be sent to an extraordinary government council for examination. This week, the Paphos Water Development Department announced that the water volume of Paphos dams has increased by 4 million cubic metres owing to the rain last weekend. Water levels are so healthy that the commodity is being channelled to other parts of Cyprus for use. Meanwhile, Paphos Municipality says that it does not plan to implement water cuts this year as it causes damage to the ageing pipe network. National News Now. This week, leaders from both sides of the Green Line started a second round of intensive talks on the Cyprus problem, with governance and power sharing on the agenda. And on Monday, Cyprus recorded its ninth H1N1 death in Nicosia. The victim was a 51-year-old man from a high-risk group. And on Tuesday, the government announced a 1% cut in the price of electricity, resulting from a reduced subscription to the Organisation for Storage and Management of Oil Stocks. Finally, we'd like to remind you to visit Perspectives, Cyprus and the EU, where human trafficking in Cyprus is part of a report of latest EU news. Please follow the homepage link and remember to press the English language option at the bottom of the screen. Well, we'll be back tomorrow with a fresh roundup of print news and again on Friday with a video roundup of the week's key stories.